Okay, so good morning, everyone. Um, we quickly want to get to the last PowerPoint that we have for scikit-learn. And the example that we see here is about um, having, let me just, yeah, minimize myself, is having a classifier in the middle and then to say if an email is a spam or not a spam. And we see we have um, some labels, like it says the first one is a spam, the second one, not a spam, not a spam, and then the last one is a spam as well. So Harlan was kind enough to explain some reasonings that they have done in other projects, like in JavaScript, if I'm not mistaken. So what was what was the methodology? What was the things that you worked on? We, we did a hack on Okay. I see. Uh huh. Nice. Awesome. Um. So perfect. Thank you, Harlan. How about what you said? Um. Just when trying to um classify uh -huh. uh, something like an email, you have the various criteria in the mm -hmm. such that if you know, there's a criteria at this point, the point value and the view. Uh, so for for implementing that, we need to have a kind of dictionary that gives weight to some stuff, right? How how you can implement it uh, practically? How how you can implement based on based on have that that kind of filtering. Implement implement that mechanism. So for instance, uh, Raleigh uh, said that if if we have for instance one hundred words, that uh, fifty percent of it, fifty percent of the words are about banking system, for example, right about money. So you can be suspicious that maybe it's like this one, the last one, which is a spam, right? But the uh, I, I just play the devil advocate role. What if, what if that is your bank statement? So how could you distinguish between your bank statement and uh, the spam like this? Yes. Like, probably not exactly. Like, probably not exactly. Like, probably not exactly. I see. So you added more stuff into it, like right now, let's check the domain as well, right? Yeah. Okay. You know, the problem is, and that is actually what happened to me. Um, I didn't want to receive those kind of random calls, especially when I'm in the class. So what I did, I blocked my income calls for unknown um, contacts, right? What was the problem? There's a chance that I miss many calls that I just don't have them or don't have that specific number from them but it turned to be an important call. So if we, you know, I, I'm just saying that to play a devil advocate, they are all amazing. And actually they were the, the methods that initially they started working with, but what we want to do is something better, more general. And look at this one, imagine that we want to implement it using the prior knowledge that we um, achieved in in machine learning. 
So we are going to train our model using 10,000 emails, right? And based on the words that we have in those huge number of emails, we are gonna, we are gonna say, um, these are spams and these are the real emails. Does that make sense? But the problem is how can you be sure about the accuracy of your mechanism? How can you rate that? Okay, with this, with this uh, confidence, I can just say this is a spam or not spam. Did you get the question? So now we have a mechanism, but how could we be sure that that mechanism works fine? Or with this, yes, Harlan. If you don't mind, I don't want to talk about the tools at the moment. I want to talk about the ideas that implemented by that model. I think that you are answering the, the implementation, which is a part of the Assignment two, so it shows that you have worked on assignment two. Good. Right? What was the idea behind it? Guys, again, you have 10,000 emails and you want to say if your mechanism works fine. How can you do that? Exactly. That's perfect. Um, I know Maharshi. So, uh, so what the data should be The data should be. What is data? Um, we are going to talk about the ratio in no time. That's exactly the question that we will have the answer for it. So as you see, as Maharshi said, we are going to divide the data into two parts, training and testing. Is there any specific ratio, Maharshi, for that? No. Um, in a toy example that we had, Iris data set, you remember, what did we do? We just took three samples, row number, one, I mean, index zero, index 50, and index 100. We took one Setosa, one Versicolor, and one Virginica out of the data set. Huh? And we tried to see how accurate our model is. And you, you remember, it was 100% accurate. But the real life is not like that. Um, in real life, actually, we use something like 20% to maximum 50%. There isn't any specific ratio, but something between 20 to 50% of the data, we use it as the testing part and the rest would be for the training. Does that make sense? And normally we use it to see how accurate our mechanism is. Okay. So everybody, please, um, just uh, whether you want to copy it from the slide, you need to download the slide and in the footer part, in the note part, you can just copy and paste the code. Again, it's in the contents of the course. Um, folder number four, scikit-learn, if I'm not mistaken. Um, then the last PowerPoint, PowerPoint number four, Slide number five. The Persian team is on a strike.
whenever you are done, please let me know. Thank you, James. Am I right, James? Um, did you check your mark as well? Awesome. Yeah. I just got the got it today. So yeah. Thank you. Okay, so Casey is fine. Thank you, everybody. Okay, so uh, anybody can explain the code, please. Anyone wants to explain the code? Not difficult. So, yeah, you look like a volunteer, right? Yes. Sorry? You don't remember what the IRS is? Okay, it's a data set. It's a data set of different types of IRS. So what we do actually, because um, the engineers at Arakanda, they are friendly and they want us to have those um, kind of to go data sets like Iris. They included that in the data sets. So you simply just say data sets that load Iris and you get it and place it into a variable. Well, you can call it anything, but here we called it Iris, right? Yank, awesome. The thing is why we have x equal to iris.data and y iris.target. Anybody has any opinion? Yes. What's your name, sir? Hmm. Great. Yeah. As Jonathan said, said that the data set is um, separated into two parts, the data part and the label part, the last column. Huh? Apart from it, the reason that we call it X is it's like a variable that we pass to a function. So look at this one. Technically, classifiers are nothing but a sort of function that we give those columns and we expect to get prediction if it is iris, if it is, sorry, setosa, versicolor, or virginica. And that is the label that we are searching for. So right now, instead of, do you remember, it, it was not easy to, to take those three rows from 150. I want you to spend just 30 seconds, one minute, talk to your neighbors about line number eight, lines number eight and nine. What do you think it's, it's gonna happen there? Um, just one thing, today we have lots of thing, things to cover. Um, based on the previous session's um, experience, those who um, get themselves into discussion, they understood almost everything. The rest, they had kind of trouble. So my suggestion is not a bad idea to, yeah. Even if you say something which is not 100% accurate, don't worry, just get yourself into discussion. So do you wanna say, explain it? Yeah.
Okay, if, if you don't mind, I pause you once in a while because I want to record it so people can hear what you said. Sorry, sorry about that. So um, as Casey said, let me just give bonus point to Casey here, okay. As Casey said, that the, the overall data um, is divided into two parts, X and Y, we know that. The X are those columns that we fit the data input part, and the Y is the label part. But here the import one library, um, we say go to scikit-learn and model selection and then import train test split. And then here we say, okay, you know what? Let's let's use train test split. We pass X the data part, Y the label part, and we say the test size is 0 0.5. What does it mean? Um, Casey, sorry to interrupt you. You were saying, what is that um, after that? Yeah, it's Oh. Excellent, excellent. Um, do you want to just, I can't hear, so you can just repeat it. Okay, so let me just ask you one thing uh, for my curiosity. When it says that 50% of the data should be the test, so means that the 50, the rest of the 50% should be the train part. We have the X train, we have the X test, those four columns, right? And we have the Y train and Y test. My question, that 50% goes to the first part of the data set or the last part of the data set? It means the first half is the test part or the second half. Okay, how many of you say that the first half? Uh, well, that, that's my concern. You know, we have 150 rows. How many of you say that from row number one to row number 75 belongs to the test part? How many of you say that no, the second part? Yes. Sorry, second part, second part. Yes. Uh, second part. Sorry. Second part. You know you're you're hitting your mouth and so you just I can't see. So, so there is no first part, guys. Maybe first part is correct, right? No first part. Okay. Um, that was a trick question. None of them. Look at this one. Imagine that. Uh, it is already sorted, guys. It is sorted. So the first 50 is what? Setosa. Half of the second part is versicolor, right? And if you use the whole first 75 as the train part or the test part, you have no idea about the rest. Like Virginica is missing them. Does that make sense? So if you use the first part for the training and the second part for the test, it's going to be awful results. So what is your suggestion if the if the data set is sorted like that? What is your suggestion to work with data set to split it? That's what I was, guys, just that keyword, random selection. Okay, Marshy. You got it? So you're going to randomly pick 75 out of 100, but from all the parts, not from just one portion of it. Everybody got that? Awesome. So make sure that all of you, slide number eight, make sure that all of you um, are done. And whenever you finished all these lines or copied and pasted, please give me a signal. Let's see. Wells. Mm -hmm. 
Done? Okay. What is happening here? Those who let's just let's just ask more people why. Um, do you want to step in and say what is happening here? Uh huh. We import three from Scikit Learn, yeah, and then. Awesome. So we create one object. We can call it anything, A, B, C, whatever, which is a, an object based on the class tree dot decision tree classifier. And then the next line is something very familiar. We have done that before. We start training our classifier to say, hey, you know what? We go and find patterns between these inputs, x's, and these these outputs, y column. Does that make sense? Huh? And then the next line, what is happening here? We say predict based on the x test those columns and put the uh, the prediction into predictions variable. What do you think we are going to see if we say Show me the predictions. Anyone except Marshy? You, you are the person without answer, you get bonus points. Can you imagine? Okay. What would be the what would be the output of this? Okay, but what would be the output? So I guess it's gonna be the features and labels. Features and labels are the X test part, the four columns. But we are going to calculate the label. So, you know, we, we use this to predict what would be the label for those features. So what are the labels? Zero. Or one. Or one or two. Versicolor, Virginica, and Setosa. We have three. Look at the next one. Here we have, here we have a bunch of zeros and ones. And you see that they're not sorted. So it shows that clearly. We picked from, okay, this is the prediction. Do we have the actual data, actual labels? Do we have yes or no? You know, even by shaking head, you can get bonus. Awesome. Is it elsewhere? That's a good question that brought a bonus. Good. Look at this one. The question that I received from Stefan is where the actual labels have come from. It has the labels have come from. So look at here. We divided the data set into two parts, train and test, right? Training data and test data. And Actually, we have the X train. Give me a sec. I want to show you. Whenever we talk about the X means that these four columns. Does that make sense? And we randomly, we randomly, random means this line, this line, maybe these two lines, then maybe these four lines, randomly, we, we have some parts as the test, some parts as the train. So imagine that the yellow parts are the test part. Does that make sense? The rest would be the... The thing is, for all of them, we have labels, no matter if they are training or testing. 
Am I right? The thing is, for the test part, we have two things. The actual label, the actual label, which says Setosa versicolor virginica. And we have the one that we predict, Stefan. Those that we predict are these zeros and ones. These are what we predict. But we have originally those labels, but we hide them. We say, okay, try your best. See how much you can find correct answers. Does that make sense? Uh, Diego, everything is clear. So technically what we have is something, let me just close this one, not to mess around with the original um, and open it again. So in that case, control and we are going to have some one, 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 two, two, zero, one. Imagine that we have 75 of these guys which we predicted, we calculated. And we have actual labels, which could be one, one, zero, one, two, um, what's it, zero, one. And let me just go a little bit further, two and zero. And the same thing here. Tell me please, what is the accuracy of this? Imagine that this column is prediction and this column is actual labels. Can you please tell me what is the accuracy of this model? Yes. Mr. Mr. Wright. Yeah. You are absolutely right. Wait a second. What is your first name? Carl with, yes, thank you very much. And uh, uh, Diego, what is the, it is double bonus because you only, you not only said, you just showed as well. So awesome, Diego. Who else? Okay, awesome, excellent. But imagine that if it is 10, 20, 100, that's not that hard. But if the number of items are millions, it's not easy to do that. So that is why we have a nice library that covers these kind of concerns. Look at this one. Um, yeah, I just wanted to show that's why I emphasized on, I'm sorry, I emphasized on this why to say we want to compare what we calculated, predicted based on the X test and compare it with actual labels. Let me just put this guy on top. So, and look at this, here is the library. We go to the to the scikit-learn metrics and then we say import accuracy score. We pass Y test and predictions. We say, okay, cut. Compare these two and show me the accuracy. Yes, sir. So when you uh, split it off and make the predictions, does it just remove the title from the prediction and then it runs the predictions and then it compares them to the title, but I guess it's like ignoring the time. I guess what I was wondering is like, how does it know, how does it check after the predictions were correct or not? Mm -hmm. Good, good question. So let's Mahir answer that question. What question? <laughs> okay. How about this? I ask that maybe Persian group is on a strike. <laughs> yes. Okay. So look at this one. Um, Guys, let me let me rephrase and uh, correct me if I'm saying nonsense. What Stefan said is, imagine that you have a data set like this. Huh? Let's just control N, have a new. We have a data set like this. Huh? 
And let me just say, oh, okay, all these uh, setosas should be zero. Yes. And all these versi colors should be one. And all these uh, Virginia cards should be two, right? But listen to me, technically we have those labels and for some of them that imagine that this is the test, this is the test, these these two are the test and so on. Uh, imagine that we have something like that for the rest as well. Uh, is it clear so far? When I say that we have the, uh, the data part, which I show with the green, um, and we have the, the label, which I, I show with the blue kind of thing. Does that make sense? The whole idea is to fit our model with the data to predict the output, the blue column, to predict this one. Does that make sense? These are the actual data. Stefan, tell me, what is the actual data that we have for line number two, first example? What is the actual label? Zero. Excellent, zero, you, you said it. Imagine that I calculate that, right? I calculate that and I say it is one. Uh, it doesn't matter if it is correct or not. I just want to tell you the, the concept. What is the prediction part? Let's just change this one to something like orange. This is gonna be the prediction. Come on. Does that make sense? So we have something, the actual label, but I'm not gonna show you. Try your best, predict. And then after you are done, I say, okay, show me your result. Let's compare. You got it, 100%? Excellent, lovely. And that is what we call accuracy. How much the, the labels and the predictions are aligned. And the good thing is, just once, the good thing is, We don't need to reinvent the wheel. They have created something complete package for us. And that is in here. You say, okay, accuracy score. I pass the actual label and the predictions and show me the result. Your question? Does it mean like you should have an empty column for the prediction? No, prediction is not an empty column. It's something that we predict. We generate that column. Right? So we have technically a good question. We have this prediction for the test. We have the label. We want to see how much we could, I mean, just get the correct answer. Does that make sense? Everybody? Awesome, bravo. So my suggestion is spend a few uh, minutes while I need to talk to two of your um friends um one of them is you actually and um tell me what is the accuracy that you're gonna get it should be above 90. Um, the the concern that we have is should be should be the same number for everybody please try it
that the the accuracy is different the accuracy um scores that you achieve are different from each other right awesome so mine was 96 percent and uh can you please just tell what is your accuracy number 96 as well who else 93, okay, who else? 94, okay, and the reason for that is, um, th that's a question, why we have those numbers? Why they're not all, for instance, 96? And uh, Casey? No, I'm just saying, like, it has to do with the previous test, because it's random to be like, maybe that was a test, but then it's random to be based on recognizing the problem. Excellent, lovely, yes. Exactly because of that, because um, we do not actually uh, use the same on uh, the same rows. Um, we use a kind of random function to split it, right? So that's why we have. It. And look at this one in the in this slide. Look at line number eight and nine, and uh, those who left behind for a new reset, you can just simply go to the note part and you can just from here all the way to the end you can just copy and paste it up. anyway uh, look at lines number nine and eight and nine oh, i'm sorry uh, 11 and 12. in line number 11 we say go to the socket layer and import tree and create a classifier based on tree dot decision tree classifier. But this is just one possible algorithm that we have. We have tons of tons of algorithms, right? You can use k-nearest neighbors, random forest, maybe um, artificial neural nets, uh, logistic regression, you name it. There are tons of options. So if you just replace that mechanism with something different, like um, psychic learn dot neighbors for K and N or K nearest neighbors. After just replacing those two lines, run the algorithm again and see if it improves the prediction or decrease the accuracy. Please tell me. Uh, the question is, change change that decision tree to k nearest neighbors like this and compare the accuracy that you achieve. So what is the new one? Sorry? Is it better than the previous?
Okay, 97. Uh, how many of you got higher precision? One, two, three, four. How many of you got lower precision? Okay. Um, well, we had some samples in other classes based on the randomness of the uh, rows. They got lower precision, but most of the people, they got higher precision by using KDR's neighbors. Not for this toy example, but when we have hundreds of thousands of records, we can just come up with this. Okay, this algorithm works better than the other. Do you know what I'm saying? For this one, we have just 150 rows. Um, the conclusion cannot be very much accurate in general. And one of the jobs that data scientists, data engineers have is defining based on their experience, which mechanism, which algorithm works better. Okay, by saying that, um, we get to the question that I asked at the beginning of the class, and I said, um, what are those X's and what are those Y's that we have? So X's are the features. Let's get back to the example that we have here. So these are, As you see, these are um, the features, X's, X1, X2, X3, and X4. And these are the labels that we have, 0, 1, 2, huh? Okay, now the question for you is, can we say classifiers are like functions that they receive some inputs and they bring us to the output. Can we say that? So classifiers are nothing but a kind of function. The inputs of the function are the features and the outputs are the labels that we expect. Okay, by saying that, our interest is knowing how, how this mechanism works in practice. Whenever I say function, well, we always remember mathematical equations and math functions. What is the first function that comes to your mind? Yes, James, you wanna say something? No? Anyone? What is the most common function when we talk about math functions that comes to your, yes, linear, which is? Uh, Fx, Fx is equal to? What? Fx is equal to what? Uh, what? what? Just one inch away from the bonus, so. I think it goes to the same as, uh, why do you why? Yeah, square plus the I know, Shane. Honestly, I just slept one hour last night, so I don't remember anything. <laughs> so, guys, look at this one. I, I just wanted to give all the marks, make sure that everybody has their marks. So, that's why. Look at this one. Uh, whenever we talk about um, the uh, function, it's y equal to mx plus b, which m is the slope and b is the y-intercept, right? And uh, the question is, okay, it could be something like that. And this is the very basic classifier. Imagine that you have, um, you have some, green and red spots like this, huh? What is the solution, guys, that you can come up with to say, for instance, what is the color of 
in this spot. Sorry? In one of the classes, one student said that, great. I was like, oh, thank you very much. So yeah, your brain automatically, quickly said that it should be, because it is closer to the green spots, it should be white, green. But how can you write a program for computer to understand that? It is classified for example, so we can divide the Okay, so any um thank you. You received your bonus box. Anybody else can can you please just come up with one solution? The question again. Just give me a solution, how you can distinguish these green and red spots. Yes, Mario? So basically, I think like we can specify a like a line that we can say like, this is the average, like whatever, like we know that it's like red, whatever it's like more than three. Um, it's gonna be quite close to this. You know? Well, actually for this line, it's no, like, not okay. It's okay. Like, so like, right. Okay. Um, Brian, you want to say something? Yeah. It's probably a distance. So we need to calculate the average or something. I'm not saying that machine learning algorithms use the same thing, but it is doable, right? We can do the calculations. Okay. Uh, for this two example, and I very much liked it in one of the classes, people say, uh, and for negative X's, green, for positive X's, red. Right? But as Mahir said, uh, well, imagine that we have combination of uh, training and testing data. The saturated color shows, for instance, the test, um, sorry, the train and the kind of uh, transparent ones are the test. So let's imagine that we have this one. If we just define a line, that line can 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 just work as a classifier. The spots on the left side are green and on the right side are red. But this one works too, right? Guys, look at this. This one works, but this one works too. Which one we are going to pick? Is there any calculations behind it for computer? How many of you think that at the beginning, when you start the algorithm, it's gonna be based on calculations? Guys, the first step is based on calculations, true, false. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor, I don't know what you did. Just keep doing what you're doing. Okay. Yes? Hmm. Okay. Um, I didn't get actually, but let's just um give time to our friends to think about it. Okay. Again, just talk to your neighbors <clears throat> and decide what could be the initial step based on calculations, for instance, calculating the average, finding the center, or what, as Ryan said, or something different.
by the way, at the end of the class, we are going to have, well, we have one hour for if you want to just check your mark or whatever. And talking about the assignments number two, we're gonna spend a good amount of time. Done? No, okay. So how about this? Guys, actually what happens is, technically we have two parameters in this classifier. One of them is N and the other one is B, slope and the y-intercept. And what actually happens is in reality, initially, just a random function generates a line like that. No calculations, random function. Tell me, is it correct to say on the left side we have green and we don't have any red yet, red spot yet, but is it is it fine till this moment? Does it work this line? Yes or no? Yes. 100%. Till this moment, it's, the accuracy is 100%. But what about now? Then we are going to just tweak, we are going to just change, we are going to alter the parameters to make it work. And we do it over and over. And that is why we call it training classifier. Huh? And there's no guarantee that this works for 100% of the cases that we define. But we try our best to increase the accuracy. Huh? So in that case, uh, just please go to the last slide, 29. Um, this is a nice, neat example of convolutional neural nets. This is the material of the next semester, but not a bad idea to start working on it a little bit. Okay, so uh, for some of the, uh, this, this, these are the questions that we have, these are the data sets. For, for instance, for this one, look, if I just use this in less than a second, in less than a 0 0.1, it gave us the answer, right? But for, for this one, it, it's easy as well. Look at this, if I just say, start this. Not that much, I mean, long. It gives us nice classi classified um, categories that we see, orange and blue spots. For this one, it is not that easy. But after one second, it, it gives us great answers. Even you can just add more filters um, or hidden layers. But look at this one. I wish I would just go back to here and let me just. Look at this one. If I just run um, for something like this, look how much time it's gonna consume. And it is far from perfection. It's not accurate at all. Okay, so let's let's stop it and then add um, these uh, things and increase the number of hidden layers that we have in the middle, and then we'll run it again. Not that bad, right? It's getting. I'm not saying it's one hundred percent accurate, but getting better, right? And just after two, three minutes. So you see that, that the number of hidden layers 
the number of neurons in each hidden layer, um, playing around with them. And there are lots of uh, parameters that we have to consider, protons. If you increase the number of uh, hidden layers, it's going to increase the time as well. It increases the complexity. Okay, just to spend a few seconds, play around with it, and whenever you feel that I'm done, give me a signal. Thank you. Done. Okay, so are you ready to talk in front of the crowd? Mikhail No. Okay. Um uh, Takami, do you want to talk? No? Yes or no? We can't. Um, Okay. 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 So, um, Uh, are you done with the um why we pick those layers or what this is exactly the content of next semester we just want to get familiar okay so uh just one thing i had number of um successful participants in the midterm exam. Unfortunately, none of them uh, want to share their secrets. I mean, in the, they're shy. So I um, got permission. Guys, the problem is I just teach. I don't know what is the strategy that they used. So I asked them, they said, um, they took notes, they used the highlights, they put them into one file, am I right? Okay, and then um, they just worked on the PDF plus the notes that they had, and that's pretty much it. Collab, did collab, I mean, work? Okay, so um, for the next one, actually, I have a complete collab file for the, uh, what do we call it, for for pandas, but I'm not gonna share it till the end of pandas. I want you to work on the slides, but for the review at the end, I'm gonna just give you that file too, okay? Um. So, but anyway, uh, thank you very much. This class, the average of this class was um, exceptionally high. So we had lots of um, grades that they were like 17, 18, 19, and 20. We had 121 in all the whole class, but the average was very high. Thank you. Anyway, let's go to the, um, what do we call it? The next part is the pandas. I quickly go through it. 
you have just one slide by two nights, uh, you're gonna have the second slide as well after I finish the other class. Pandas is a library that they have generated and uh, they created, and it works very much uh, fine with NumPy. Actually, it is built upon, on top of a NumPy. And uh, whatever you can do in Panda, in, in Pandas is something that you can do in Python as well. But the, the major difference is the, the performance is um, incomparable. It's super high in, in performance. There are some concepts that we use uh, different naming namings, but the same the same concept. Like the data sets in pandas, we call them data frames. Um, well documented, lots of functionalities, well supported uh, community, and um, everybody tries to add something into it. Lots of documentations, as I said, uh, plays well with other packages, especially NumPy. These are the features that makes us, uh, make us to, to choose pandas for working with data sets. Uh, so for environments like Anaconda and Colab, you don't need to install anything, but I have mentioned um, what you need to do for yeah, to have them, or if you do not have the proper version. Everybody, um, please open Colab. Please open the Colab um, saying. And uh, Open a new cola. Done. As always, we need to import uh, relevant libraries. Most of the time we, we import pandas and NumPy, but for, for this two example, let's just have pandas as PD. If you go to the course content that you have, I added 05 pandas. And if you click there, we have data. So, we just need to download um, Chipotle. Please download that data set. So data, Chipotle. And um, click on the folder on the left side and then Drag and drop that chipotle over there. Whenever you are done with that, please give me a signal. download the Chipotle and then drag and drop it to the folder part. Done, awesome, who else? I'm both Okay.
So if you just run that line and this line is gonna show you, what do we call it? A data set, the way that you see here. So we have order ID, quantity, item name, and choice description and so on. What if I say, what if I say uh, my data frame or DF is equal to this? In that case, it's going to suppress the output and we don't see anything. Well, actually, because everything is inside DF, right? This is pretty much what we need to do for the assignment number two. We have a data set for the second part somewhere, and we just get the five. What is TSV? Can anybody tell? Table, yes. How much is CSV? God bless Google, right? So tap separated, tap separated. What's your name, sir? Again, yeah. Yes. Jonathan. Well, let's give bonus not always to correct answers. How about that? Okay, so Negin as well. So, uh, it is tab separated. Which one do you prefer? Um, let me just open the file. If if we go to the data set that we have here, and that was Chipotle, right? Right click and I say, open it with um, Notepad. It's going to be something like this. Huh? Tab separated. Which one do you prefer? Something like this, tab separated, or something like, let's use, or something like this. You got com comma separated or tab separated? Oh, so we have two strong teams, comma separated, tab separated. Um, not because it looks better. Bring reasoning. Okay, let me just play a devil advocate. What if we have comma as a part of the data? It has the same issue, right? Because you say that tab separated, it is possible that we have tab for as, as a part of our data, right? What if you have comma as a part of our data? Okay, just think about it and bring the reasons, which one is the best or better at least. Sorry? I think Which one is faster? TSV is faster, okay. And and yes, what well, tab is more readable? And TSV requires a fully parsing for it. What is the pitfall of tab separated? If it, if there was no pitfall, if there was no problem, we didn't need to create a comma separated. So there should be an issue. The issue is it doesn't work always precisely fine whenever you use a kind of column which has lots of things it includes tab automatically. So you expect, for instance, if a name is lengthy, 
unfortunately, it's going to consider name and last name. You know what I'm saying? So if a name is a kind of lengthy name, it's going to divide it into two parts. So that is why comma separated is more reliable, especially if the, the, the size of the data in each column is not manageable. Okay, so getting back to the example that we have, For, for this one, um, you see in the collab, I just said DF is equal to the path and it doesn't show anything. What if I want to show something about the data set that we have? Very simple. You can just simply say DF dot head, right? And it's gonna show you the first five rows of the data set, yes? Should we use? Yeah. Yeah. And we are going to talk about it. Okay. Uh, just know it is possible that we use the data that we have uh, on GitHub. So this one, if you go to slide number 13, let's just copy and paste this in our browser. Look, it shows tab separated GitHub data that we have. It's GitHub address, you see? Uh, Bitly is a nice um, web tool, tool that gives us the, the, the ability to shorten the link that we have. We have some alternatives as well, but Bitly is one of the best. Whenever you are done and see the data, it's the link, please give me a signal. Here is the link, the slide number 13. Oh, um, you don't have the slide, sorry. Bitly, bit.ly slash cheap orders, cheap orders, and it should give you the Works. So let's go to the next next part together. In on account, if you see that pink color warnings, uh, sometimes it says that the, the command is deprecated and uh, maybe incompatibility of the uh, versions, don't worry. You rarely see such a thing in Polar. Um, sometimes you need to run in administ administrative role. This is something that we already worked, worked with. So if you say, for instance, DF equal to something or order equal to something, it doesn't show unless that you say order.head, for example. How about this one? Everybody, please use Let me show you. OK, so everybody, please try. You don't need to try everything, everything, but you need to know what is happening in here. Explain to your neighbor, to your friends, um, about every single line. Let's have two, three minutes for that. Time and finish it.
Okay, so um, let's just quickly go through the lines. The first one uses the, the folder that we have here and we already uploaded the data set. The second one is going to download it from the URL that we have. And the, the third one uses seven equal to backslash t, which says, hey, the, the, the splitter here is what? Is tab. And uh, how about the how about the last one? The last one says the character that goes to the next line is backslash n, so a new line character, right? Um, okay, but the life is not uh, like before in this example. So everybody, please try bitly the slash and movie users and see the result. It's not it's not nice neat data set. Do you see the result? So what is the problem? The first problem that It is not tab separated anymore, right? So if you say, let me just close this one. If you say a PD dot read underscore table, so it's gonna show you uh, something like that. So simply you can say comma, what? Sep is equal to, tell me. Backslash T. It's not backslash T. Uh, is it possible just to just say simply say this one? Yes, no? Why not? Nice, yes. And inside another square bracket or something. 
inside, um, I'm sorry, inside um, when the train is in course, uh, inside single or double coat. So in that case, look at the result. Then it's gonna be way nicer, neater. What is the second problem that we have? Well, the first row is not column header. It it's it doesn't contain column header. We don't have column headers, right? But unfortunately, it considers the first record as the column header. So one of the things that we have to do is this. We can simply say header is equal to none. In that case, uh, just a bit better. Means that instead of the first column, we have zero as the column header, one, two, three, and so on and so forth. Can we do the columns and write it in square bracket? That's the next part that we're gonna talk. Guys, did you did you did you get everything so far? Okay, the next part is, let's say, uh, well, actually, um, I happen to know what are those columns. So the first one is the row number. The second one is the age, gender, occupation, and the postal code, for example. So for that case, I'm going to say, let's have user underscore calls. It could be anything, just a variable name. So user ID, age, gender, occupation, and zip code. Huh? The column names in pandas, I repeat, the column names in pandas are called names. It means what? Here, the last part, look, names is equal to that user calls that we defined a few seconds ago. After that, automatically, it's going just to replace those zeros, ones, and so on with these. Okay. Please make sure that you um, finish and have no issue with it and then give me a signal. Thank you. Thank you. Done. Okay. So let's go to the next part. Yeah. Um, is it possible that I directly use this list instead of saying user calls? Yes, 100%. It's going to give you exactly the same result. Right? It is possible to, to just use this technique to have and with, it is possible to rename the existing column names. Later, we are going to learn that too. Yeah, it's going to be next week, beginning of the session. So um, before I forget, um, not a bad idea to bring your final project proposal next week. The reason for that is it happened that some people uh, considered a very light um, project for a group of five. So I don't want anyone that loses mark for that. So um, I think it, it's, it's a good time to work and talk to your friends and come up with an idea and bring it next week so we can discuss and see if we need to add something into it or just make it 
well, to adjust it for the final project. Um, how about this one? Sorry. One of the things, actually, the last thing that before we switch to the uh, midterm as well as the final, I'm sorry, the, the assignments too, is this, yes. Um, actually, for most of the things that we talk, and most of the time, if you just say, for instance, pandas dot read table, read underscore table, it's going to give you uh, the first, the very first link that you're going to see, or the top five would be the the recent version of the contents that are available on the internet. One of the thing is, look at this data set. Imagine that. Where is this one? Uh, imagine that here we have movie data set. Something happened to my computer. Okay. And on top of this, I'm going to add something like this data set is written by Reza, something like this. Is it part of the data set? Clearly no. What if I have something at the end? What if I have something at the end like um, edited, edited date slash time, say 2023 dash 10 dash 31, okay? So we don't want the first line, we don't want the last line. It could be a couple of lines Here is a sample. Okay, one of the ways that you can manage working with these files is manually, you open the file and get rid of them. But the question is, is it possible without manually changing the file that we have? Ask pandas to take care of those unwanted um, unwanted lines? The answer is yes. And so, if we say skip rows, the number of lines that you mentioned here, Pandas is, got, uh, is going to skip those number of lines that you mentioned in front of skip rows. The same applies to skip footer. So if you say, for instance, uh, one, it's gonna just exclude that line, yes. Oh, sorry, manually. Okay. That is not that much common. Something, you write something in the middle of the data set. Most of the time you either write it on top or in the footer part. Does that make sense? By saying that, actually, we finished the content that I have plans to cover for today. We are going to discuss a little bit um, and quickly later, I'm gonna just close the recording. One of the things that I mostly saw um, in submissions that they have already done 
They just work, especially in the, se in the second part of the assignment, they work on yes or no, zero, one type of things. It is not that much, I mean, um, practical in terms of using machine learning. If you want to have some yes, no conditions, it's just simple nested if elses. Why do we bother using machine learning? Because the number of possibilities are very much limited. Whenever we bring ranges into the game, then machine learning makes sense. You know what I'm saying? For instance, please do not say fever, yes, no, zero, one. Why not saying that, okay, the temperature, is it 37 centigrade? Is it 38, 39 or what? And some people got 100% accuracy. It shows that something is missing in our algorithm. And that is, for instance, you say catching cold, yes, and then COVID, yes. You know what I'm saying? In, in that case, if, if the relationship is 100% equal to one of the columns that you already have on the left side, then why should we bother? You know what I'm saying? If one column is enough, to get the answer, you're always going to get 100% accuracy, which is not correct. We want to predict that column. So what are the other things that you can use Reza as the range? Don't say that cough, yes, no. You can say the, the strength of coughing, like zero, no cough, one, a mild, two, three, four, something like that. Uh, having blood pressure, yes, no, doesn't work. What is the blood pressure? Uh, blood pressure. Does that make sense? Um, not a bad idea. If you uh, this class has the most number of people who already submitted, um, ten, actually. The collection of other two sections are less than just this. Um, Please talk to your neighbor, neighbors, explain that. And I'm going to stop recording at the moment. If you have any concern about the marking, we are gonna just uh, spend a good amount of time on that. Yes? Um, this is all topic, but about the final assignment, um, I don't, can't find any like, information on it other than like, the alternative you posted. Um, okay, let me just go through that. One of the problems of this course is we have lots of announcements, right? Okay, um, can you please help me? Let me just say control F, final project. Okay, so here it is. How about, how about the other? Um, I quickly explained that here, but um, for the final project, you have the library uh, to select a topic that aligns with, uh, sorry, sorry, uh, liberty, I'm saying library. Uh, you have the liberty to um, pick anything which is aligned with your, your desires. And if, if you think that I have no idea, I just want to do something and finish the job, then I remember that in the, course content, we defined um, alternatives, right? If we go to the final project, we see that we have alternatives and the needed data sets for each of these. So alternative one, alternative two, alternative three, all the way to five. 
Um, I strongly recommend that pick something that you really like to do and, and finish. Anything relevant to Actually, recently I started exploring something about IoT and uh, machine learning. I, I very much loved, for me, it's like whenever I have time, I just do something new, do a project. Why not doing it like that at your end? Uh, the thing is, please bring the bring the idea next week. I haven't opened any new uh, folder for it yet because I want to have that brainstorm together. And then we are gonna just upload a proposal a week after. I'm gonna announce it. But for now, just for the next week, please bring your ideas and let's discuss, okay? Again, uh, please make sure that by the end of next week, you're clear about the topic of the project and the group members that you're gonna pick and so on. So by saying that, I'm gonna just close recording. So thank you very much. Stop.